Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to give it a few seconds here just to make sure that all our friends get on board correctly. Just a few more folks joining us here. As a reminder, if you haven't already, do mute yourself. You should be automatically muted. And you can come on camera if you'd like. We'll explain it all in just a bit. Is it better to do this on the website or my phone? Uh, we'll actually be screen sharing. You should see that it's available as a screen share so you can walk through it. We'll do both the um, online application and through the phone, the phone app. All right, people will continue to join us, but we're gonna get started. Hi there, everybody. I'm JG Decker. I'm the Senior Associate for Resources and Events here at APAP. I use he, they pronouns, and I'm a fair-skinned person with long brown hair, bright blue glasses, a black shirt with the greatest singer ever on a white background. Um, for those folks that might need a visual description. I wanna acknowledge that APAP is located in the United States capital of Washington, DC on the ancestral lands of the Piscataway and Acostan Pamunkey people who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. I would like to pay my respects to the elders, both past and present. I'm in Massachusetts, so I want to acknowledge the Nipmunk, Wampanoag and Massachusetts people of the Shamit, also known as Boston. Joining us today are our interpreters from Purple who will be spotlit throughout. I wanna encourage everyone to use the chat, the chat function to ask any questions and allow each of our speakers to get through the presentation. There will be a Q&A at the end, don't worry. Always a Q&A. Remember to speak up, but also to step back if you find yourself having too much airtime so that other colleagues can ask questions. Whether this is your first APAP or your 50th, every question is welcome. All right, so we're going to get started. I'm going to turn it over to my favorite boss, my only boss, Neo Narnor Madison. Uh, thank you, JG, and greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As JG mentioned, we are going to go over some basics with Swap Card, and then we'll hear from our colleague, Paul with swap card. And then finally, we'll end with Q&A. So we hope that we have time to address all of your concerns to get you on board in advance of our conference. So we are going to start with just an overview of the options available for our attendees in swap card. Uh, I'll start with all conference attendees are automatically added to swap card. You should receive an email that invites you to create your profile. If you've participated with us in the last two years, you already have a swap card profile from previous conferences, but you should go in and update your profile with relevant information or anything that has changed. And again, you get this invite email from swap card. I think it usually comes every 48 hours with a new link and a reminder to create your swap card profile. So with that, I will start. Once you log into Swap Card, you will see this home screen as you do for JG screen. On your home screen, you will see all of the tabs available for the attendees leading up to the conference. And JG, we're going to do a bit of a click through of all of the tabs. And let's start with the schedule at a glance, please. screen so I can see. So on the schedule at a glance, which can also be found currently on our website, which is an overview of the detailed schedule of all events happening at the conference. Date, JG, next tab, please, the detailed schedule. Here is the detailed conference schedule, which is currently only accessible via swap card. So you must be logged into Swap Card to see the detailed schedule. Here you can see a day-by-day -day schedule of activities that are happening at the conference. And I'm sorry, JG, I'm going to pause for just a second. I see a question of someone not being able to see 
this shared screen. Can everybody just give us a, a thumbs up or note if you are having difficulty, if you're not having difficulty seeing the screen? Okay, it seems that most people are okay seeing JG's screen. I'll keep going. So as I mentioned, this is the detailed schedule. And here you can click on each day of the conference to see what is happening during the conference. You can also add sessions directly to your schedule by clicking this bookmark to the right of the session. Thank you, JG. And once you click on that bookmark, that session is added to your schedule. Um, please click on the attendee tab, JG. Thank you. It's, it is. Uh, can we zoom in a bit more? This may be appearing a bit smaller on some people's screens, JG. Thank you so much. So this is the attendee tab where you will see every, all of the registered attendees that have created their profile are here. Um, and you would be able to match with people. You see AI recommendations of conference attendees that you may want to connect with. But this is the full list of conference attendees. And JG, let's go to the exhibitors tab, please. Okay. This is a list of current exhibitors at the conference and their booth numbers as well. Um, JG, could you click on a booth, please? Thank you. This is the virtual landing page that is the accompaniment to your in-person booth at the conference. So here you will note you have their booth number, which is 571 in America's Hall 2. You'll also, if you scroll down for me, please, JG, you can see information about the booth as well as time slots when members of the booth would be available to have meetings. And we'll go back into the meetings a bit later. But JG, let's go to the Expo Commons map, please. So here's the interactive floor plan of our booth layout in our exhibit commons. And if you see over to the right where the mouse is on the screen, you have RL, and that stands for the Rhinelander level. You have A1, which is America's Hall 1. Thank you for clicking on that tab, JG. And then you have A2, which is America's Hall 2. So if you click on that tab, then that takes you to the floor plan of every all of the booths on that floor. Also over to the left, you will see a plus and a minus. And the, if you click on these tabs, that allows you to zoom in and zoom out on the map. You could click directly onto any of the cubes here. Please, are you clicking? Okay, and again, that's showing you the name of the booth and their booth location. And if we could close that, please, JG. And over here to the left, you'll also see this is an alphabetical list of all of the exhibitors in the Expo Commons. And JG, please go back to this poem at Swap Card. Thank you. And so from here, we can go to the Showcase tab, please. This clicking on showcases tab takes you to all of the active showcase listings for the conference. You can also on this tab, you can refine your search. You can search for um, the first letter of someone's name if you're looking for that and you can also filter. And just like with the schedule tab, you can click on a, the bookmark here if you'd like to add a specific showcase to your schedule. And once you've done that, then this says showcase would be added to your schedule. And let's go to the My Event tab, please, JG.
So on the My Event tab, you can see here that JG has added sessions to their schedule. And you can, from this tab, if you'd like to, you can export your schedule directly into your personal Outlook, Google, or iCalendar by clicking the Export to My Calendar tab. And you'll see now up to the right corner of the screen that shows you your calendar that can now be exported to your calendar. And below that is also an option to download PDF. Thank you, JG. Can you click on that and open the PDF, JG, please? And now if you were interested, this would be an opportunity for you to click on that, create your PDF, and you could print a hard copy schedule of the things that you've added to your schedule in Swap Card. Okay. Can we go back to the Swap Card screen? Thank you. Okay. Um, and let's see, we're on My Event, and we are right now on the My Schedule tab. Can you click on My Meetings, please, JG? So here you can update your meeting schedule and then you can manage your availability and you can also see what meetings you have scheduled. So right now you'll see that JG has a meeting confirmed on Thursday, January 11th at 3 p.m. with me and that's been confirmed. So that could be exported to his calendar. And if you go below, you see that these are the other times that JG is available for a meeting. Can you scroll up slightly, please, JG? Can you click on the My Manage Availability tab, please? Okay, and here you can go in and create your availability based on your conference schedule. Um, meeting times are set up in 15 minute increments and you have the opportunity to mark an entire day unavailable if you choose, or to just click on the specific times that you're available during the conference. Please, okay, you can click out of this screen, please. Do you want me to take over and from here? You, you? Yes, please. Thank you. No worries. All right. So as you can see, we have we can add our meetings here. You can export and download just like before to either your calendar or have a nice printable version of it as well. I'll just do that little PDF just so that we can see it. And you'll see that it looks pretty much the same as the other one before. You also have your My Networking tab here, which the system will automatically suggest folks to you. You can click on into their profile. You can actually start conversations with people from this tab. Get a little bit about them, start setting up meetings. We do bring over all of our um, information from the registration, so you'll be able to easily see this depending on what field people are, such as if they're an agent, presenter, booking fees, um, where their location is, social media, if they've added it, and that. We're going to go back to the My Event. And then I just want to point out that you can also switch your time here. That does, I know everybody's coming from so many different places. You can switch it to a 24-hour system, we will automatically display in New York time. So just be aware of that. Moving on, we will go to our networking tab, which this is where you can see, as you might see right here, I have several different connections from past conference and you can add other people either just by clicking on the profile, whoops, either by just clicking on the little add icon person and add them into your network, or you can search up somebody easily, such as Neo. You can actually do it twice for her. 
And then the last one will be our help desk. This is managed by APAC staff during the conference. Um, right now, it's not so much set up for, for it, but once it is, you'll be able to access the chat and be able to talk with us directly about various things happening during the conference, both before the conference and during it. And with that, I'm gonna go back to the home screen, do a little check-in with my team. Good, Neil, good, Paul. We are, but before we turn things over to Paul, I'm going to read a question in the chat, JG, and if you could respond to that, that would be great. So um, under the My Meetings tab, all times, excuse me, all, all meeting times are checked, but nothing is populating on the main page. And actually, Christine, if you're still with us, I'm going to ask you to come off mute. If you could explain that just a bit more, I would appreciate that. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Christine. Hi, how are you? Um, so <laughs> uh, on like the, the page that is like your uh, like your profile where you have your video and everything, like the one that I saw that you guys were using as a sample had like your logo and then underneath it had you, like your ability, but like the time slots that were listed underneath the logo. So like somebody could go in and say, I want to try to make a meeting with you. Like, under mine, it just has the logo and it has like bookmark and then your information of your company, but it doesn't have those click buttons that have there. And then when you go into uh, Exhibitor Center and pull up the, uh, the, the availability, it shows that every single one is clicked and checked off but it doesn't then put them on like this page where you're seeing, right, exactly. It has, um, if you go out from there underneath that, just click that X, it has like all these meetings set up. It doesn't have that under ours. Okay, okay. I will look into that. It's like, yeah, under bookmark, like the agency station meeting set is not there unless there's something that we're supposed to click to pop so it sounds like we will go back through but in the exhibit center that i think there's some um settings that have to be turned on to make sure that your time slots yeah like you see it but sure. i don't see that oh i see what you're saying so you don't necessarily will see because you're actually linked to this uh-huh um you okay. as the exhibitor won't see you can't set up a meeting with yourself Got um it. As much as I would love to meet with myself, I think I'm an interesting person. You just can't do it from it. this view, but you should be able to see the other ones as well. Um, where you would see your time would be underneath the my event. Um, oh, and this is where you that. would actually be able to like block out it from like when I'm available or when I'm not available. So wait, how do you get to that section? The, uh, the my, my, my event. So sure. I'm under planning exhibit do we get out of the exhibitor center oh i see what you're saying actually we're going to cover that in just a little bit okay all right um so got it but great question we oh. will revisit that so we'll come back to that for everyone. I see follow-up questions in the chat. Um, Christine is referring to the view that you see as an exhibitor on your landing page, but we will cover what happens in the exhibitor um, help desk in just a moment. And before we move on to Paul, I'm gonna just answer a few more questions quickly, JG, if you don't mind. Um, from Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, the question is, are all showcase listings now managed through Swapcard and not another software? And that is correct. We um, heard you all last year loud and clear, and we've moved to a model that is a bit more user-friendly and will be easier to navigate on site and in advance. So how you are su to submit showcase listings is through the JOT form once you've purchased them. And then our team has someone dedicated to uploading showcase listing and managing edits. So last year we used a service called Timely. That is not the case this year. All showcase listings will be housed here on this app through Swapcard. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Jennifer just has a note, and JG, I think we can flag this. No, some of the information on our profile is incorrect, and we are unable to change it. And um, Jennifer, we, if you can put this in the chat directly to JG, we can follow up. I want to make sure that we're clear. Is this your exhibitor profile or your personal profile as an attendee? And you can put that in the chat and, chat and we will follow up and get you an answer to make sure your profile is updated. Okay. Um, is it more Morgiana or Morgiana? Um, I have the swap card app on my phone but don't know how to access swap card from my computer, where's the computer log on? So after you become a registered attendee of the conference, you will receive periodic emails from swap card or APAP at swap card, swap card inviting you to log in and create your profile for this specific event. Okay, I think those are the end of those questions in that section. I am going to turn things over to Paul um, for a bit more technical information on swap card use. Thank you, Paul. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nio. So my name is Paul Perardel. I'm a customer implementation manager at Swapcard, and I'm French, as you can hear from my lovely accent. Uh, if you have any trouble understanding me, don't worry. I won't mind, and I will repeat myself. Uh, that is not an issue. So now that we made the global presentation of the event and the platform, we're going to get a little bit more in detail for the exhibitor. And more especially on two subjects, I will present you first a video that will show you how to scan people using your phone. And then we will do a, a walk through the exhibitor center. I've heard that we already had question about it. So I hope uh, this uh, little uh, stroll around will help you to understand better the exhibitor center into Swapka. Uh, first of all, so I'm gonna share small video that will show you how to scan people using the QR code that uh, the, everybody will have during the event. Share the audio and here we are. Can you see my screen, JG? Can you confirm? Yes, I can. Perfect. So here we are. Hi everyone, so this is Paul from the past and I'm gonna show you uh, how to scan people on uh, during the event and how to access uh, their contact after. So the idea is pretty simple. You need to be into the app of the event, so the app app for the app app. And as you can see, I'm on the main screen, the main page of the event, and it's pretty easy to scan people uh, at the bottom right of the screen, you can see that I have a, a purple icon with, a, with a, a camera inside. I just need to click on it. And I just need to scan the QR code linked to this person. So the QR code uh, is accessible also in the app for them. And once you scan the, the QR code, you have access to the contact information of this person. So as you can see, I just scan Leo. I can on this, on this page, book a meeting. You can see that I have uh, in here in the middle uh, the time slot available. I have access to the information shared by Neo, her, uh, her contact details, uh, if she is linked to uh, an exhibitor, and uh, the most important thing for you, you can add a scoring, some tags, and also some notes uh, about the exchange you have, uh, you have with this person. To reaccess it after, as you can see, I'm gonna go back and uh, you can see here on the, at the top right, I've got a small icon with two people. This is my contact list. And as you can see, I can find again Leo here, access all the same information. I can send her a message, but also uh, if, if you want to, if you scan somebody by mistake or if you're not interested anymore, you can remove the connection and that will delete the person from your contact list. And that's it.
So I'm taking back over. I will stop sharing this screen and I will move back to my other screen. So I hope that was clear for everyone. If needed, uh, I will share the video also with uh, Neo and Joshua and they will be able to send it to you if you have any question. We will answer it also at the end of uh, of of this uh, of this part of the session. Now, uh, so as I already mentioned before, this is something more dedicated to the exhibitor. Uh, we will present the exhibitor center. So if you're only an attendee of the event, uh, I will present some uh, some 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 things that are not available to you because it is a, spe a specific content available only to the exhibitor. So as you can see here, I'm on the main page, I'm on my uh, computer, I'm on the main page of the event. Uh, so we presented it, uh, Joshua already made, Joshua and Neo already made the presentation of the content you can see. You have here also the same button in the middle, you can see your profile at the top left. And just under your profile, you can see as I'm I have- Sorry to interrupt, Paul. I don't, I'm not seeing your screen anymore. Are you sure? Is this just on my end or is everyone seeing Paul's screen? No, I don't see the, uh, if you've been moving, I haven't seen that either. Okay, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna finish up sharing and I'm gonna do that again, sorry. No worries, back up, I can do it from my end if you just direct me. It should be true. No, let me know. I see it now. Thank you. Do you see me moving around? Yes, I do. Thank you. Perfect. Sorry for that. Uh, so as I was saying, I'm in uh, the main page of the event. So as you can see, I can find all of the buttons, the menu at the top, the buttons in the middle. On the top left, you can see uh, uh, my profile and I can go edit it if I need. This is available to everybody, not only the exhibitor, but also the attendees. And so, as you can see, just under, uh, there's a small, uh, a small window accessible only to the exhibitor where you will see uh, the booth you are part. So if we click on it, you can see that I'm part of Swapcar. I'm gonna edit it. And now I'm accessing to the Exhibitor Center. The Exhibitor Center is where you're going to be able to edit all the information about your company, but also where you will be able to find all the leads, all the people you scan to see the team members and also the meeting that are linked directly to your company. So let's go from top to bottom. So we have a small home page uh, with an access to all support also. I know that uh, that uh, Neo and Joshua will have a specific booth for an help center, but also if I don't know, you're trying to access it during the night or you don't have uh, all the information you, you, you would like to have, we offer 24-7 support uh, to everyone where you will be able to send them questions um, they have an SLA of two hours, but usually only uh, answer in just a few minutes. So if you're working at night, for example, then Neo and Joshua are not available, all support is available. Moving on to the company profile. So we can find here the overview. So those are the information that are gonna be available uh, to everyone visiting your booth. As you can see, it's mostly empty on my side, but I can edit a, a description, add some social media link, contact details, add some documents. For example, if you have presentation about your activities or your, associ your association or whatever you want, all of this is, um, is available here. I will go back to the team management a uh, little bit later. Here, so you can see documents and links. So for example, I want to add a document, you will be able to either add a link to a document that is, for example, uh, uploaded to your website, or if you want, you can upload it directly to Swapcar at the title and an overview. 
for the team members, no. So you have a possibility if multiple people are participating to the event, you have a possibility to add them to the booth and not be the only one managing your booth. It can help, for example, if you have multiple meetings or if you know that you're going to be more on-site and you would like to have a person managing more of the virtual part of the site, it can be a good idea to add more team members to your booth. So as you can see, I'm alone, but if I would like, I can add a member and um, I'm going to pick Joshua's email, for example, just to add it to my booth. Here we go. And now you can see that Joshua is part of my team on the uh, in the booth. I can see its profile, I can edit it and everything that is needed. The two uh, last parts that are probably the most important part for you, the lead board. The lead board is where every uh, connection you make, scanning people with their QR code during the event, you will find them here after. So you have a, uh, a first board that is, uh, or to say that a quick view where you can find first name, last name, job title, company, and the date of creation. But if you export lead here on the top right, you will have access to an Excel file that will be uh, a little bit more complete than this uh, quick view uh, board. Everybody that you will scan during the, the event will be, find, will be found here also. Finally, the meetings. So, as you can see, I don't have any meeting schedule yet, but you can set up, and I know that somebody was asking question about it, uh, your availability uh, here. So as you can see, everything I'm available or my company is available for for all all the all the slots that has been defined by the organizer. If I want, I can say, for example, I won't be present on Tuesday. I can turn off the whole Tuesday. Or I can turn up just a few uh, things. For example, I don't know, I'm leaving at six, so I'm not taking any meeting after 5.45 p.m. This is at the company level. It's not the same thing. Uh, it is something to understand at the company level. You, uh, people are requesting meeting with a company, then you as a team member or as the team leader of a company, you will be able to affect people to meeting saying, okay, you would like to have a meeting with Swapcard. I'm going to say it's Joshua you're going to have a meeting with. And uh, so this is different from uh, when people try to make a meeting request directly with you as a person and not as a, as a company. And that's it. Uh, those are all the information available to you uh, in the exhibitor center. So as you can see, we can see that Joshua now is part of my company. Uh, so that's it. And if you have any question, uh, I think now is the time for the Q&A. Okay, thank you, Paul. And we'd like to spend the rest of our time today going through everyone's uh, specific questions on use and swap card. And I think you covered some of this, but I'm going to um, first go back and ask Christine if you'd like to uh, join us again. Christine asked if you could run through how to register additional booth staff as we cannot link them in swap card, which you've just gone through. But I also have a note from Jennifer, I believe it was, that the option to add staff was not present on her page as you went through. So if we could go through that process again, please, Paul, of how you link additional registrants to your um, booth. Yes. So first of all, the most important thing is those person have to be already uh, into Swapka. I am not able to register someone that is not registered to the event. Uh, to register somebody to your booth, to add somebody to your booth, uh, we will do a search into the registrant list of the event. To add team members, it's pretty easy. So either you go from the overview here, 
and you click on manage or you click directly on team members on in the tab. As you can see here, I have GJ that I, I have added. GJ was already part of, uh, of the event, so that's why I was able to add him. And on the right, you can see that I can add a member. And here you will have to add the email address linked uh, used to register the person. For example, if I'm looking for a GJ personal address, if he has a Gmail, for example, but you register with his professional email, I won't be able to find him. I need to use the email he used to register for him. And so I just have to type the email and the person will, and I just have to click then on admin. And I'm going to, thank you for that, Paul. I'm going to ask jo Joanna to unmute and ask, I believe she has a follow-up question to what you've just gone through. Hi, Joanna. Hi, thank you. Um, I I see all these things on the back end of the swap card booth, like the home, company profile, team members. But when I click on the team members tab on the right side, I just don't see that button to add a new member. That doesn't, that's, that's just not there. No worries. I see that uh, the main contact for your booth hasn't added you yet. Um, I just did it for you on the back end, um, but you should see that available now, ish. And I should um, and say that I'm I'm actually logged into to the, the main person's swap card, kind of looking at the back end of hers, not my own personal one. Sorry. While you're doing that, that's an important detail. The primary registrant is the only the first person that is going to be linked to your booth landing page. The primary person must be the one to link other staff. If that person hasn't done it, you won't see the option to add yourself to um, the booth. Okay. It, and, um, and so even under Sandy's, there's another person that I, I'd like to add as well. So thank you, I do see that I'm added now. Is it is it possible to just double check if Sandy has the ability to add a member as that button because I just I still don't see the button to add a member. So it sounds like we need to determine who was the, the primary registrant for the booth purchase and what that email was and make sure that is linked and then you would be able to add additional team members. Okay. And in the same way for Christine Barkley, I can see you also are having a challenge adding team members. And Owen, okay. So we will take a moment to explore this. And I think it is, a, it's wanna make sure the settings are set so that everyone has this option. Okay, thank you everyone. I am going to go back, let's see. Um, Brenda, you had a question about your meetings being deleted. Yes, I have two questions regarding the meetings. One is the time, the scheduled time that it shows for available uh, that are available for meetings are the one that the expo is open, right? I don't have to worry about the expo being closed on that time. Or you know what I mean? That the time available for meeting, the expo booths are open. Is it right? That's correct. Right, that will okay. not close. Okay, that's one question. And the other question is, let's say I uh, try people to have a meeting, so I request a meeting. Uh, let's say I feel Friday, no? Asking and they were on hold. But when I come the next day, all of them are free again. You know what I mean? I do. So what that means is that person has to accept the meeting. If they don't accept the meeting, then that time will still show is open on your end and is still available because they've not accepted your meeting request. That is what that means. So okay. it will remain open until that person accepts and then that time slot is blocked at that point. 
So I can fill up again with another person. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. So I, I think it is after 24 hours, if a meeting request has, uh, has not been accepted, uh, the meeting request is automatically canceled by the, by the platform and you are able again to request a meeting on that time slot. Okay, okay. All right, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I'm just going to go up. Let's see. Jennifer Langford, you had a question. Um, I'm thinking this is for your exhibitor center that you weren't able to upload a PDF. Is that the, what your question was or your yeah, comment? That's that's correct. As of yesterday, um, it was only whenever I tried to upload a PDF of our like one sheets, it it turned it into a link. Mm -hmm. That happens to me too. Paul, do you have a suggestion onto that as opposed to it's turning into a link that takes you off of the platform as opposed to seeing the PDF of there? Okay. Yes, I'm doing a live test to see if there's an issue with the platform. And I will let you know. So it is normal that it's changed as a as a, as a URL because uh, we are uploading the document to Swapcard and the name that is shown, as you can see, is the title you, uh, you wrote just under. And if I go back to the event and that I'm looking for Swapcard. You can see here my document that I just added. Yeah. And then it's happened. downloading as a PDF. Oh, it's downloading on through that link. Okay, let, I'll try that again yes. on my end. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Cynthia Shaw um, is asking, can you show again on the screen how you got to the QR code, please? Or to scan it or to get to the QR code? To actually get, well, I think we should do both by showing where, how you navigate to find it and then for the scanning purposes. So to find it, uh, from what I understood with Joshua, uh, you will have your, uh, your badge that is, that's going to be printed for the event and you will have your QR code on it. Also, we are probably going to discuss that with uh, Joshua and Neo. Uh, in Swapcard, we have a possibility to add uh, uh, a virtual QR code directly on the event uh, that will be here on the main page. You will have probably a button called My QR Code or My Ticket. Uh, it is an option that uh, is available to, to the organizer. So we will see if uh, they want to implement it. So that's how you get your QR code. To scan it, so it is um, on your phone. What screen am I sharing so you can see on the desktop too? So it should be good. So it is video. So you can see how it looks on the phone. So you can see here on the right of the screen. I, uh, what you're showing uh, is what the mobile view looks like if you were on yes. your phone, correct? Paul? Yes. Okay. So that's how it look. That's how, that's how it looks on your mobile phone. As you can see at the bottom right, I have an icon here, a purple icon with a with a camera inside. If you click on it, it will open your camera, and you will be able to scan people. And to to circle back to scan people, sorry, I don't know if you can see this well at this angle. Okay, this is our conference badge from last year, and it will look similar to this. There is a QR code on my badge. So that means you would use the app on your phone and take a picture of the QR code on the badge, and that's how you would scan someone's contact information. Please correct me, Paul, if I have missed a step, but that is how that would work. It is, it is exactly like that. 
Um, let's see, I see another question from Cynthia. Last year was my first conference, so we want to check. Yes, Swapcard is our only platform for information related to the conference. This is where you will see your agenda. This is how you will connect and wayfind on site as well as see all showcase listings. Okay. Let's see, um, Janine, uh, can you lift up your question? I'm not sure I completely understand, but you want to know the difference between the swap card navigation that Paul took us through versus what um, JG and I were going through at the top of the session. But then I see that you said, never mind, you figured it out. So I think that you are all settled. Thank you, Janine. Okay. Um, Owen, you have a question. Is this about the camera icon on the mobile app? Did you say no icon is visible on your phone? No icon. Yeah, is that just something that's not uh, active until the conference? Correct. So that is not active now, but then you will see um, so they'll probably that icon. That in New York. In New York, yes. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, Morgiana wants to is noting that your exhibitor information needs to be updated since the last conference. Um, Paul and or JG, could you speak to how to update your profile from year to year, please? Yes. Uh, so um, just just a quick question. You, you're not using any integration. Uh, you're in the back, you uploaded the people with the Excel file. Well, if that is if correct. I, yes. Paul, if, if, I, if I can jump in here. Um, so while this was going on, I, I, I tried to access uh, Swapcard and I was successful. I went in, I got the email with a direct login, but all of the information that I had input for last year's conference is not there because my email is now different. So that's, you know, that's fine. If if I have to uh, re-input it, that's okay. But I don't know how to do that because when you go to the exhibitors tab, you get a listing. It I, I don't know how you, how me as uh, a registered attendee for APAP links up to the organization that I represent. That's what I need your help with. So there's two subjects. First, it is normal that you're not seeing your information you you added last year because in Swapcard, a profile is linked to an email. So if you create a new profile with a new email, you won't have the link between the two of them. So you will have to add those information uh, again later. So as I said, uh, if you are on your computer, on the left, you have this little window here where you can edit your information or you can click on the top right. I've got also a small picture of me here. And if I click on it, I have access. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for everyone to see better. I have access to my profile here. And here I'm able to add, uh, I'm here, I'm able to add, uh, to edit all the information about myself. Ever if I am uh, about my contact information, the information linked to the event, everything is editable here. If you're not linked to your exhibitor, uh, to your exhibitor booth, and you should be the main point of contact, I advise you to get in touch with uh, Leo and Joshua so they can add the, they can add themselves, uh, they can add you directly to the to the exhibitor booth. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we have a few minutes more. I think that we have answered most of the questions. If there are additional questions, I would welcome you to raise your hands, um, come on camera and, and share any remaining questions you have. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I've got a question about um, 
possible uh, forum. So I remember a couple years ago we had like um, a mentor forum where people could connect uh, real time with possible mentors. Will that return this year or is, is that not slated for this app? It um, is, it is just not on yet because it is not being managed, but there would be not in a formal way. There's a mentor for a moment. That is a session that's going to happen in person at the conference, but there will also be a tab within swap card as we get closer to the event where any, all of the registrants can come in and talk to past attendees and get advice. So it won't be a formal mentor program, um, mentor exchange program, but there will be a tab in swap card that will allow you to connect with a new and old attendees in that way. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Sarah. There will also be a tab in the coming weeks. Um, if some of you participated in earlier sessions, you've noted we have a deadline for uploading showcase listings and those printable on-demand materials. And once all of those materials are finalized, there would be a tab on swap card that says print on demand resources. And there you would find a PDF of the expo map, um, a, the most up to date attendee list and the printable PDF version of the expo hall listing, as well as the showcase listings. And those would, there'll be a tab. Um, that will allow you to see all the principal resources we have as well. So there will be a few additional tabs that will be added to um, swap card as we get closer to our conference. Thank you, Sarah. Are there any additional questions? So I see a okay, a couple of notes. One from Karen. I see I've logged into Swapcart with last year's login. It allows me to edit my profile, but does not allow me to edit my exhibitor profile. Should I be logging in in a different way? Um, JG, would you like to take that? Yeah, and actually, like I figured Karen it out. Figured it out. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, actually, it might be helpful if, since we've lifted it up. If others are, are logging in in that same manner, it might be helpful to share that information. So if you want, uh, you need to log in with the email you use to register for the event. So for example, if last for last year event, you registered with another email, it's not going to work. You're not going to be linked to this year event. You need to log in with the email you use to register for this year event then you should be uh, linked to the to your exhibitor booth just in case you're not as karen just ask get in touch with neo and joshua and they will take care to, to add you to the booth yeah. hi oh and i was just typing to you but please ask your question oh that's fine uh yeah i did log in all my information propagated from last year including last year's booth number and not this year's booth number in my profile. Um, it says I need to contact. I've contacted like three times so far. I know you guys are inundated. Will that change over? That will change over. And also the booth map will up, will be sure that we're updating your listing because you're carrying over from last year. And also um, the booth map, which is interactive, it will show your direct placement now. And if you click on that with the number and your name, listing and location. But yes, we will be sure to update your booth listing. Thank, Thank you, you, Owen. Um, let's see, Cynthia has a comment. Um, I'm accessing my show on swap card on my phone and everything from my show last year is there. So since I'm doing the same show again, it means I don't have to update anything, correct? That is correct, Cynthia, unless there are new URLs to information, to marketing collateral, if you have any updates. But if you don't, there is nothing that you need to do to update your profile. And your profile contacts from last year will also carry over to the new event. Uh, 
I've muted myself. My apologies. Last call. Are there any final questions? I'm going to jump seen... in. Neil, I'm sorry. Yeah. I couldn't get no my worries. raised fast enough. Um, so I have the old the swap card uh, swap card app on my phone from last year. So I I tried to access it, but the only information that I get is just a listing of events and not the not the um, not the screen that is shown here. So do I, so since my email has changed, should I just like delete the app and then reload it? And if so, how do we reload the app on the phone? Which which app are you using? Is it the swap card? Is it called swap card or is it called app app? Uh, it's it's from swap card. It ha it has the like the affinity symbol. Okay, so it's it's the gener so you should be able if you're logging with the same email that is uh, used for this event, you should have a, yes access to a list of events. And if you look for the app app and uh, NYC twenty twenty four. You should be able to find the event and to access it. Well, I, I see um, upcoming, it says upcoming APAP events. It's a little black square with a white type. And if I choose that, it gives me a list of what's happening starting with Tuesday, January 16th. Um, and, it, and it just has recommended for you, but it's really... Um, very, uh, it doesn't so, look anything like your screen. Okay, so maybe Neo, we need to take some time after just to check with which email she's logging in. If there's not maybe an issue during the registration where uh, with a with a mistake on the email, just to double check and re everything, and then yeah, I think we we will be able to troubleshoot the situation. And you're mute, Neo. Thank you. Okay, so we will be sure to review that and follow up to make sure you're able to access um, the current conference information. And I see Lynn is asking about, will we be able to see the recording? And yes, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, this recording will be available on our website. And we encourage everyone to, to continue to go into Swap Card and use it as more information will be available there in the days as we get closer to the conference. Um, and we thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Take care, everyone.